adequate notice of this meeting has been given pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. At the time of the board reorganization in January of this past year, the board adopted its regular meeting schedule for the year. Notice of the schedule was sent to and published in the Asbury Park Press on January 6, 2024, and the Two River Times on February 1, 2024, as well as supplemented by published notice of July 11, 2024, to advise of the hybrid format. That notice was also posted on the bulletin board in Borough Hall and has remained continuously posted there as required by the statute. The copy of the notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Borough Clerk. A copy of the notice has also been sent to such members of the public as have requested such information in accordance with the statute. Adequate notice having been given, the board secretary is directed to include the statement in the minutes of the meeting. Uh, so, uh, Sheila, shall we take a roll call? Uh, Mr. Orman. Mrs. Bush. Mrs. Koch. Here. Mr. Here. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Here. Mr. Bailey. Here. Mr. Fletcher. Here. Okay. Uh, let's try to take the flag. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, why don't why don't we just get to the uh, the administrative item first, so that we can uh, we have no old business or new business, so we'll move right into the approval of the July sixteenth uh, minutes, which were distributed uh, via email prior to the meeting. Um, does anyone have any comments on those uh, on those minutes? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Um, Mrs. Koch. Yes. Mr. Walsh. I wasn't here. I don't know why. Can I? Uh, Mr. Palin? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Lansford? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Fletcher? Yes. Okay, so um, we invited, uh, so, so as you know, uh, the last two meetings, we've been talking about uh, the re-examination of the master plan, which is due in August 2026. And uh, we we've worked together as a board to come up with a you know a very high level timeline. Um, but through those discussions, um, we 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 wound up with a number of questions that I think uh, we need sort of professional help. So we've invited uh, Mike Sullivan, our our board planner, uh, to attend tonight to to help us get organized or at least to start to get organized. Uh, with regards to the master plan reexamination, what it entails, um, you, you know, are we are we amending just certain elements? Are we going to do a full rewrite? All of these things were were discussed over the last two meetings. We didn't seem to really get anywhere of substance, um, and and so uh, I think it's important that we have the professionals uh, involved uh, in uh, in this meeting to help us get orders. I, I think what. And, and we'd like to hear from all of you as well before we get started. I think what we'd like to have probably over the next two meetings is a is a good timeline. Um, obviously, resolution on 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 what we're going to do for the reexamination, and then a timeline to to address that so that we can start um, creating the different committees for each element and making sure that we uh, we have obviously enough public outreach and then also involve the other other you know the other committees um in the town that that probably need to be involved so um with that i'll just open it up to to anybody on the board uh to add to what i just said before we get started doug anything uh no thank you okay <laughs> okay uh so i'll turn it turn it over to mike well, thanks for inviting me. It's good to yeah. see you again. <laughs> I don't I, was I here for the zoning board or was that for the planning board? I was here once this year. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, yeah. I've been here a lot this year. There hasn't been a lot the, Yeah, there hasn't uh, been a lot on the agenda or really the last year. So thanks that for inviting needed, me. Needed. So I, I do want to I did have a, a conversation with Fred. We talked about 
um, generally what was going on so that you're, uh, you do want to comply with the statute and actually do a re-examination report prior to the deadline of 2026. Our firm did your last re-examination in 2016. That re-examination, I don't know if everybody's refreshed their memory with, of it. It was pretty basic. Um, it was not something that, uh, it wasn't as robust, let's say, as many of them are. And it wasn't a master plan. Uh, well, it doesn't stand for the proposition that you have a master plan. Anything that was in there that has not been incorporated in your master plan is still just a proposal. It's not a policy. Um, and that's the difference between a master plan and a re-examination. Re-examination report, and the statute tells you all the steps you have to do and looking back and identifying uh, circumstances that have changed, um, uh, how you think policies, policies should change, uh, recommendations for master plan amendments, recommendations for zoning amendments. It's really what it is. But it's really just a plan for your master plan and your zone. It's not, it doesn't constitute those things. Um, so I think one of the early decisions I think you need to make is do you need this to be also a master plan update to either the land use plan, which is really your zoning guide, um, or another uh, cir maybe circulation is real important, or um, you know, with respect to housing, uh, housing plans, uh, that's a big uh, thing now. Uh, the state just dropped a new law um, in March, and uh, towns are required to comply with the, the statute in terms of accounting for the, any trust fund spending and trust fund, um, affordable housing trust fund income, uh, and also any units that uh, were produced uh, during the last rounds. And also going forward, developing a fourth round Housing plan. So that's that's and that's on a tight time frame. That's by June 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 thirtieth, twenty twenty five. Right. So we when we spoke on the phone, I, I think there were two things. So so that was you know <laughs> I guess the the June twenty twenty five deadline. Right. W what exactly is required? And and I, I is a new housing plan element and fair share plan. So we have to we have to effectively rewrite the housing plan element of the master plan. It's really not well. It's it's. Up, it's a it's a new one, but it's moving from your third round plan, which is not that old. Not, that's the overlays. That that was the rich the overlays. Yeah. That that was it the, included yeah. the overlays as part of your compliance mechanisms, right? So that was mm -hmm. included in that. So um, so yeah, you're going to get new numbers um, from the DCA. The DCA is establishing uh, because it's still not there's still no COA COA went away and they haven't come back. Uh, for the third round, the courts took over enforcement and, um, and for all the towns who cared to participate and try to protect their immunity, which you did. Um, the DCA is now going to play a role of an adjudicator or a, they call it the program, which is going to be uh, the storehouse of all knowledge of all municipal plans and documents and determining whether or not you're compliant or not. Um, they are also charged in October with developing numbers you know, an allocation for every town in the state. And uh, with very little faith, and I, I've said this on the record in several places, that they're gonna meet that deadline. Um, state doesn't usually do that, but that's not gonna absolve any towns of having to meet the deadlines. Uh, my firm, uh, for all of our housing clients, we're actually developing a model. Um, and by September, we think the model will be ready to actually model uh, what we think DCA is going to do. Um, and the reason we're doing that for our clients is to get a head start on planning and also to have a basis whereby we may challenge the towns want to challenge them. Um, we're following the stat, the laws uh, to do that, and um, we'll see where that goes. Um, so that's the, that's the housing piece. But right, so so Doug, you had one well, question. I have a question. Just a so, quick question, so I can give the board a frame of reference because your firm was also instrumental. In helping us do our updates to the affordable housing, we had the ordinances that higher rule than the yeah, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you familiar with the work that they assisted us with? Yes. Okay. How much of a lift will it be to bring us up to date from, say, the higher and rural materials to, I mean, I, you've identified some things. How much of a lift for the board to update the master plan for the next room? For the housing, housing plan element fair share plan? It's it's 
it's not that much of a list. The laws change so much that there's different mechanisms or different bonus structures. Um, there are uh, different ways to comply. So it's a, it's a new set of, or a modified set of compliance mechanisms. So it's, it's just taking, all we do is an accounting of where you got to based on the last round mm -hmm. and see what, what you've done. And then we go from there based on the new numbers. Can we, uh, other than numbers, is there anything? You're a vacant land town, right? So yeah, yeah. so you've got a vacant land adjustment. For a vacant land adjusting town, uh, who's not. Wait, I, I we're, we don't have any. We, we, you're a vacant land adjustment town. Okay. Which means that when you got your number, you said to uh, the council or the courts, you don't have enough vacant land, oh, okay. presumptive okay. densities, okay. right? In order to that would the made us do the overlays. So you, right. so you do the overlays, right? right? And so some of the, and that's and what you're addressing with that is called unmet need. You don't have the a vacant available developable land to do it. So that's called unmet needs. You're taking care of that. In the world of available land, you don't have much. You're still going to be a vacant land town. But what the new law does is it makes you look harder at redevelopable areas. They look very Fair Share Housing Center was doing this in the last round. They're making us look at if you saw a developed site and it looked kind of marginal because it was built in the 50s and the industry was going away, they'd say that's a redevelopable. You have to zone that for housing. So it's 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 a little bit different this time without getting the details in terms of the mechanism, but you're a vacant land tenant. So your unmet need from the last round is going to go into this round and the new um, whatever the perspective need is is going to go on top of that to the extent that there is is any. So, so Rick Rich, have, has Hired Rule been in touch with you at all on this? Or has have they, you know, been contacting anybody yeah. in Borough Hall on this? Chris, anybody? Um can I yes. can I say one thing? We we've been working with Mike Edwards. Yes. Too. And and do you know Mike Edwards? Yes, we're ready to work with him in other places. Sure. So so he has been keeping us um, informed as to what the requirements are as as of March, I think when the first yeah, they, they send their letters out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So and he uh, Hiram Rule is still our fair share housing agents, right? Right. So uh, there are planners, planners with regard. Planners. So we have two plan the board, our planning board has two planners. Mm -hmm. We have CCH and we have higher and rule for all housing element matters. So I would I, I mean we would I think we need to address with higher and gruel like what the timeline is because exactly. we we can't have something dropped exactly. on us a, a month or two months and, before and this Mike thing Edward's is due. Office has yeah. developed a timeline uh, a timeline that Chris York has that, okay. that he can provide us with. But um I think we all have to work together in concert because you can't have everybody working independently on the same proposal. As it affects our management. Absolutely. No, no. I was just giving you because it came up. And when I spoke with Fred, I said, you know, as far as I know, I was an informed manager for affordable housing partnership. So. Yeah, I brought up the resolution from January that the governing body adopt, uh, passed. They they changed professionals as it relates to affordable housing planner. The uh, affordable housing planner is uh Kendra we would Lily from Kyle Mc, McManus. We we had a Zoom call with mm -hmm. Mike's firm. Yes. And she was on that. And mm -hmm. it kind of a mm -hmm. kickstart on mm -hmm. where things were moving. So but then he canceled the second one. We've never right. We've never met again since then. So I, I'm not really sure where we are in the process. But Chris should know that. Yeah, but I, I just I, I mean I, this is our, I mean, it's a planning board responsibility, is it not? Yes. It's a, it's a combination. It's a governing body. The planning board okay. is the housing plan element of the master plan, because that's under the master plan. The fair share plan goes with that, but it's got to be endorsed by the governing yeah. body because you have to take direction from the, the governing from, body. So the, govern, the, govern, the governing body, so council is driving. I, I'm just worried that. We got no, something that it's something we have to do and 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 you know sort of added a little on it a little bit. My understanding is the planning board makes all the the does all the proposals, makes the plans, and then the governing body votes on it. So we do the work and then present our findings to them and they vote on it. So then we're driving it. 
No, I think yeah, I New York that. definitely drives. In, in, in most and every in most towns, there's a it's a there's an affordable housing committee. So and we have one. Right, and you got it, and it's it's Mike Edwards, it's your planner, it's the planning board, somebody from the planning board, somebody from the governing yeah. body, usually in that world, and 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 that's who really tries to solve the issues and present them to the full and government. But it's it's really a you're together on it. So it's 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 more. I think the housing plan element, fair share plan, have a much closer uh, linkage between the planning board and the governing body. Than typical master plans. Yeah, I, it just seems to me like we're running around in circles. We need to start somewhere. You know, what do we do first? You well, know, I mean, the, the, we they, they don't have that. I mean, the, the re exam is separate from the from housing plan. Yes. So if you're talking about the housing plan, do whatever Mike Edwards does. <laughs> that's, that's, right. But it would seem to me that the, the, the housing plan. The housing plan element is is going to be is going to be due, like you said, in June of twenty twenty five. So right. it would seem to me then, for purposes of the reexamination, we would pretty much be done unless there's any other update to the law, right? Because we would have done like the reexamination report that's due in twenty twenty six would just reference the work we did. It would only be a year old at that point. Where yeah, we have to do, of course. I mean, we wouldn't have to do anything else, I would think, for, right. the, for the housing. We would be looking, you would yeah, for the, for the housing ones. Kind we would be looking yeah. back at the housing yeah. plan element and saying we updated our housing right. plan element pursuant to the new statute in 2025. And, you know, the re examination plan says employment. That's it. Focusing on housing plan at home, other than the affordable housing and, and those things that have to bring us up to the current mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything significant that the board has to concern itself with? Because I think that's what Fred's saying. Once that's done, are, is there really anything else in that element that the planning board will concern itself with? Well, you know, it, the, the original purpose of a housing plan element was to really look into your the needs of a town. Yeah. And it's morphed into something which is just an edict from the state. And here's what you got to do. So most housing plan elements only focus on how do we solve the affordable housing plan. They don't focus on how should housing be treated? I'm assuming that's how, unless our de demographics have significantly changed. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that they have. I don't, I don't know that the demo. I'll say this. I don't know, even though we do all the demographics and housing plans, whether you don't even look at those. You just do them because that's what's required in a housing plan only. What you do is you look at the number that you're required and you say, okay, how do we get X number of units built either through inclusionary, or 100% jobs or overlays. Okay. So it's 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 not as a it's not as um, so we not as holistic as it, it we should have concern been. ourselves that much if there was a significant increase in population or a significant change from say young families to seniors or something like that. Yeah, I, yeah, you could it, it, it might it might have some bearing if there was okay. a big change, but you know that doesn't happen. And there can be no change, right? Yeah. Our housing plan could be what our housing plan is. We already have the overlays. Well, the, the, you're going to need more overlays. Yeah. So we're going to have to put more overlays yeah. than we already have. Yeah. We've been and so tasked with more. Right. Um, we've been well, tasked with more units. Which is what the state's trying to do. Shove right. more units back in front. The numbers uh, have changed. Right. But I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry about last time. I don't know where you're getting more overlays. You're going to overlay in neighborhoods now? Well, what, so my point, in the business. My point, I mean, yeah. I have to overlay. Completely. And then we had the church property over Fair Fields a spot. And then I don't know where else you're gonna put There's nothing else here. It doesn't exist. I think I think what that's my point. Yeah, I think what you're saying is like price. Right. You still have your unmet need, which you'd have to recognize. You have then your next round of okay, here's what we've decided is on top of that unmet need. And do you have a realistic plan to address that? Yours is a very practical response. I don't know how we do it. But we might have to work with um, Mike Edwards in a coordination with our with the professionals to say, here is something reasonable that, if challenged, that we haven't met <laughs> one needs, that we have something that. I mean, the, the snow judicial scrutiny. The snow development was going to meet some needs, mm -hmm. but it never happened. True. The application came before us, and the application went away, and never came back. 
and they they received all of their permits. They yeah, they were good to go. Right. So that was that's another property that would help us meet some of these requirements. It's not there. So I mean, I guess that's there in the future. If they build it, that's a piece of property we said they could do it with. But I think I think that in this in this in the current world, what you may do is if you if there are areas you've already done overlays and you think that and they haven't developed, are there things to enhance them to make them if you really want to develop? Right. If you have, I always encourage towns, if you can make some lemonade apples, right? What what do you want to have happen? You know, if you have an area that really could use some refreshing, I mean, not that you would have that here, um, but you do have places like that. Um, like the business districts, if you could incentivize redevelopment there and the current overlays aren't working, well, maybe you need more density. Um, people don't do things for free. They get paid to do it, and that's what developers do. So if you can find a way to leverage that and say, well, we're going to solve this issue, but we're also going to incentivize redevelopment in a way that's really positive, it's worth taking another look at some of the overlays you've already created right. in these commercial districts or mixed-use district, districts to see because if you do create these things and you can actually um, spawn redevelopment and you can get some really good requirements in there, you could have some dramatic and positive change, let's yeah. say. So if there are opportunities, that's what I would be coaching you to, to look for. Where, where are these opportunities where you can actually make something happen through this? Because if there's money to be made, there'll be a developer not trying to make the money. Yeah. And you know, with the, with the business districts, you know, you've got a whole series of different ownership issues, right? There's always connected parking lots and the connected streets and, and they have these kind of things. So there's other issues there at, at, that are working against redevelopment of these sites. And so looking at how, you know, and this is a re this is a re-exam thing too, right? This is a thing that you do with the re-exam of the master plan. Because you don't want to just look at your housing plan and say, oh, we need we need 20 units over here to a, a, an overlay. It's not that thoughtful, but if you really want to think about how it could happen and visualize it and and work with some of the owners out there and the, and we get the business community. I mean, we've talked about committees. Uh, you know, I've worked in places where we brought in like where we had heavy rentals. You know, we brought in the realtors to talk to us about how do we make good rentals, and and then we talked to the architects about how do we make good buildings. How do we make it all work together so that people can yes, you can rent create beautiful buildings and transform some of these places. So that's the kind of stuff you don't really talk about too much in a housing plan, but you would talk about that in the ladies plan element mm -hmm. or a urban design a community design element. Um, and then that would translate into either a redevelopment plan or regulations. Kind of getting all over the place here. I'm yeah, trying, I, 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 I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to bring it back though. But so the housing plan the, thing, the yeah. exam So so, so how do we, I, I think we talked about um, starting the, the, the process with a survey for the, for the public and we, you, you know, how, how, we just, how, how do we get started here, I guess, is really. Well, surveys are kind of a, they're, they're, they're kind of a big, it's not a big deal. You got to do it carefully, right? And so it starts with formulation of the questions, the things you want to know, right? And um, there's communications involved with this. There's robust communications and outreach to get people to participate in it. Um, you know, it's usually like a two month process to do that um, because you want to, you need to build a survey, which means you got to develop the questions and what you want to know. Um, you've got to um, test the survey, make sure it works. You have to decide what the conduit and the outlets are gonna be. Is it gonna be your website? Is it gonna be a, um, uh, an engagement hub, which is a separate type of website that would host all the information for your master plan or your re-examination. Um, how, how the survey gets um, analyzed and evaluated and the format of the survey. Um, there's lots of ways to do it, but it's a, it's, it takes a lot of thought up front before you even pull the trigger on a survey to do it in a real way. And there's a lot of communications involved. And there's expense. And oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It, and it, our budget's really, really tight. But there's <laughs> a benefit. 
your firm spearheaded the last survey yeah. as part of the re-examination. Mm -hmm. So right. you can recycle some of those questions, refer sure. them, take a look at what we asked the last time. It was nine years ago, yeah. fairly recent. Okay. You know, and we, we got a lot of good feedback on that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it has to be complicated. I'm just saying that when you do it, it's it's got to be built right. And the questions may be a little different now. I mean, I, I don't, you right. know, the consciousness of land use is all sitting around. The and I don't think it was even a little above and beyond land use. I think there were some other questions in there, like municipal related type stuff that we wanted feedback from. Oh, oh yeah. There's all yeah, kinds of stuff. Get that data. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff you can ask, and you yeah. need demographics first. So you have demographics up front, um, and it could be very, it could be very robust, or it could be more simple. We did use survey, which is a, it's kind of a blunt tool, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, and, but I know, I know some very uh, experienced. Folks who will have worked with us on other master plans who use survey monkey for certain things. I mean, we can. So, are we doing a re examination and overhaul? What exactly are we going to? Well, I think that's what we wanted to determine today is what was involved in each. Uh, it sounds, I mean, so how do we evaluate that? Yes. Yeah. What we got stuck last month was us that don't know. What we're going to use it. I, I yeah I mean I, I like there's nobody sitting here that's done this before. Well, and so, so we were we were just looking at it from a I, I should say we I know I was looking at it from a perspective that it's 30 years old the master plan uh, plus um, of oh, the 1991 the original document. Yeah, original doc, I, I, I pulled up. I'm looking at it right now. I look at the table of contents. You know the the elements that are in there. Um, you know we just. Dove into the master or the housing plan element for quite a bit. Um, you know, the land use, the circulation, the facilities. It just seems like it a, we could certainly do the the re-examination effort and look at it from that perspective. Is there ever a chance or does it make sense for this body to look at doing something more than just that? I think that was the fundamental question we asked ourselves. Do we use it as an opportunity to refresh? Like actually create version, you know, twenty twenty six of our fair haven master plan. Yeah, well, it's very rare for a town to do every element of the master plan. The statute provides for, I believe, it's like thirteen elements, give or take. We should probably know. Um, <laughs> they keep adding, yeah. yeah, and then they keep hanging other things onto the elements that are re redundant, and they it's they drive me crazy. Anyway. Um, so it really did depends that, on your, you can't touch 13 or you, what's that? When you said there's 13 different elements, like you, there's you certain can, elements you have to, there's mandatory elements, housing okay. plan elements, like mandatory, land use plan elements, man, man, mandatory, stormwater management master plan is now mandatory, but it's not in the same section. It's on the you put it under the utility plan element. This is what it was saying. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, Goals and objectives, which is not really an element, but it's part of the master plan. There's like more you have to do. Um, I think you have to ask the question: What is the benefit of rewriting well, the master plan to the 2026? Yeah. It going through that, you know. Well, the question the question comes up a lot. But the question really is: What do you? Let's be strategic about this. Like, we're not just going to do every element just to do every element. You know, given budgets and time and everything, what what are the things you want to accomplish? And and those are the elements that are going to provide the underpinnings for zoning. If you want zoning to change, and your land use plan element is out of sync, and you want zoning to to follow your land use plan element, then you update the land use plan element. But don't is it wasn't that the purpose of the survey? I mean, we talked about that. Like the survey was going to guide us to what was i mean we know what we think is important based on the discussions we've had here over the last several meetings but didn't we say that the we needed to have outreach to the public to direct us in terms of what the public felt was important that's certainly one element i think one part of the conversation last month was also looking at the 2016 re-examination had several i put it as like a recommendation to suggest you do these things I come back to the, the example of the setbacks on River Road and the business district are still at 35 feet. 
but we want a close in look and feel like a town feeling in the re-examination. So to me, and I don't know if that's part of this process, but there's a miss, there's already a, a, a misalignment of the master plan and, and what we are governed by today and what the re-examination 2016 says we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, is that our job as a planning board to try to rectify those in things that aren't aligned in our next version? Or is that a, a, a governing body step that just never happened after we did the last reading sandwich? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Right. The one thing I was going to say, if you read through the examination report, I think it's 2016. 2016. I think the first thing you need to look at is look at all the accomplishments that the governing body or the, the borough has completed, whether it's Putting the bike lane network in, which has always been talked about, you know, bike safety and pedestrian, all the streetscape work. You can go, go down the list. Facility upgrades, that's finally underway. Those are major undertakings that took several years to get into the works and planning and, and budgeted and, you know, funding allocated for. And then take a look at that list of things. Okay, you know what, we didn't accomplish these. Maybe there's reasons why. Um, you know, your example is a good one. That's a pre-existing condition with the setbacks, but that's that's a whole planning exercise that would, you know, it's somewhat complex. It's not complicated, but take a look at all those. So to your point, we used to call it a planning, and, and I think that's why it's in this conversation. So when it's a planning exercise, does it happen in conjunction with what we're faced with now, which is a re-examination, or does it, Happen outside of the re-examination doesn't have all the answers, right? But the re-examination is pointing you towards the problems and issues that need answers. Okay. So and and the master plan is where those policies get studied, you know, developed, and then finalized prior to zone. That's the way it's supposed to be. So can you make recommendations for a zoning? I'm still wrapping my head around it. If we were to do a re just a re-examination, would that then be relayed to council to vote on to change the zoning as it stands today? Or does that have to be done at the master plan level? The the, the re-examination can the re-examination can recommend ordinance changes. Great. Okay. If you if if you can come to a conclusion about what you want to make a recommendation, right? Um, you could recommend, we recommend that the governing body study X to determine whether the setback should be changed. That, that's a recommendation. But you could all have a very uh, clear mind and say, we recommend that the governing body adopt an ordinance that makes the setbacks along River Road 10 feet. So, right, right. So, so you could say that. And they could decide whether to do it or not. They don't have to. But right. that could be in a re-exam. So that the, can be a re-exam. Right. So the, the, what... What we what we what we ultimately come up with will guide the the governing body to either make or change or create additional ordinances to address what's it in can the, right it, it doesn't have to. doesn't have to it can it, it's a guide for both governing body action on ordinances we're not making policy by doing this right You're that's making, we can't we can't policy. do that right the exam doesn't constitute policy. But the re-exam is a guide for not just the governing body to change ordinances if it's clear enough or to study it. It's also a guide for how to update your master plan. That's also the guide. Can we do a re-exam by the deadline that's two years from now? And then in the subsequent year, the, the master plan can be updated subsequent to the re-examination. Can you update the master plan at any time or is it happening? You can update the master plan at any time. You can do as many re-exams as you want. I've got towns where we've done three in a year. I did two in one town last year. Well, in 20, winter 23, spring. What is the part to two elements? What? Update the various elements. And you can update the master plan as often as you like. What, what's the part to update the master plan as opposed to a re exam where you're recommending next Wednesday? The difference, the difference between a re examination report and a master plan is that a master plan actually has some uh, as a basis for your zone. The re exam is not. I mean, you can recommend things there. But if it's not consistent with your master plan, when the governing body 
there's a consistency with you. Right. You may have done these before. At the planning board, when the, the governing body introduces an ordinance, they send it back to the planning board, and the planning board is supposed to look at it and say, this is consistent with the master plan. plan. Yep. Right. If your master plan is from 1991, they're sending these back to you. You could say, listen, it's not consistent with the master plan. They then have to have, they have a super majority vote. They have to, to, to pass it. So it, it's complicated. And if you get into any, sorry, who's they? And that we, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. If, if the governing body refers the, the ordinance to the planning board for consistency, and the master plan is very old, the planning board may determine that the ordinance is inconsistent with the master plan. And then the governing body would have to pass it by a super majority. Or could the we, governing body change it what's on the recommendation of the planning board because due to an inconsistency, we recommend that the governing body make this change. They totally, yes, okay. exactly. And that's, that's the role of the planning board. That's exactly right? But I think too, historically, the borough has had a land use subcommittee that's helped guide mm -hmm. the planning board, the governing body, also take the annual report of the zoning board, see what their recommendations and data shows, and then compile proposed changes to those ordinances. Yeah. And we've so, got a decent amount. There's a, there's the, what subcommittee did that? We have a, we've had, historically, we've had a land use subcommittee. The, um, you mentioned the zoning board annual reports, reading through those ahead of this meeting. There, there are very specific recommendations yeah. in each annual report that could be ported right into whatever re-examination we do. I don't think we had a chance to look at those as well. There were, you know, there's, there's 10 years of, of, of guidance from the zoning board as far as names. So the, the important thing about the master, the important thing about the master plan is you can't really, it's hard to rely on the re-exam of the basis for zone, right? It's not a policy document. The master plan is. Let's say that you decided to have a redevelopment plan, or create a redevelopment plan for River Road. And that has to be consistent. It needs to be consistent with the master plan. It should be. If it's not, you can get folks who aren't happy with what you're doing poking holes at you. you know, so, so the reexamination like, reports then don't really update. So with the way we were if thinking not, about it, that I, was not, not, I, wasn't, I was actually asking that question. So the re-exam is not a master plan. It right, but, but it's, it's not even an update. So it's not even an update. It's not even yeah. at all. They don't get. They don't get. No, because you know, we were talking about you re-exam the master yeah. plan, look at it, and make recommendations based on the master plan on what the town wants to do and what direction we want to go. Right, that's that's what happens with the re-exam. That's a, that's right. It's, that's basically, exactly. it's basically a to-do list for your zoning ordinances and master plan. And then the town decides to take you up on change on ordinance or doing this or fixing the sidewalks or whatever. We come up with in a reexam. So maybe asking it in a slightly different way. If if we identify that there were a backlog of things that were recommended in previous reexaminations, and acknowledging that a lot of stuff is new, I'm not trying to make it. Well, that's that's part of the reexamination process. So you look you look back at the last reexam. So in 2025, I think that's the question we're asking ourselves. Do we want to continue to just cultivate that list, or do we actually want to go back to the master plan and spend our time updating the setback limits, updating the zoning charts, things like that? So B1 zone, we have those conversations, so we hold those forms so that it's it, it, we're doing the work for that update rather than making a recommendation to council that says, hey, we think this should be updated. And then that kickstarts another process where they either kick it back to us or a subcommittee or something else to actually, like, I, I don't know the mechanism for updating the master plan if we're not the ones like- The planning board updates the master plan. Right, but you but we're saying that the master plan is not, like the the, the governing body passes the ordinances. That's right. right. And so they just because we put something, right, just because we put something in the master plan doesn't mean there's going to be an ordinance. Well, there's a presumption that there's coordination because you have governing body members on the planning board and that, you know, this is a this is an exercise that you're not just spinning your wheels here and then picking it up. It's it's a it's a it's a collaboration. To that, to that point, and I think we're going to the extent that we did the reexamination report, we had certain recommendations and we knew we had the blessing of the governing body to make those, it is conceivable that you could do a re-examination report and an update of the master plan in one proceeding, is it not? 
That's the way we normally recommend it. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, and we just, I think that's what we've done some of our data. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if that's what you're asking, but, but, but very often, and we've done this in, in several places, I normally recommend it, is that when if you're doing a land use plan on an update, which is really, and you're changing zones, let's say you're changing zoning designations or things like that, you need to update your land use plan element when you do that. It's really important. And sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but is yeah. that us or is that zoning board that's responsible for like zoning board? Zoning board no, is the planning master plan is the domain of the planning board. That's all you have to, you know, zoning ordinances are a collaboration, but ultimately adopted by the government. Um, very often we will come, we will do a re exam with the master plan update because, um, due to a quirk in the, in the statute, um, if you do a zoning ordinance amendment that was not included in a recommendation of a master plan re exam, you have to notify everybody within that zone, within 200 feet of that zone. And those notices by personal service get very expensive. Um, many towns like to avoid that cost. So we talk about this in a way that says, okay, well, you know, this, you can do this. Um, let's do a re-exam too. You want to do a re-exam too? We do the re-exam too. So now you've covered them both. So if somebody says, well, was that in a re-exam or not? You basically meld them together. And um, we do that routinely. That's just one reason. You're, you're not trying to avoid the notice. You're trying to avoid the cost. The, the master plan itself, though, is a... Is a... 10,000 mile high look down on what we're doing. And then the ordinances are dictating what happens based on that master plan, correct? Yeah, it's, it's actually, they're in there as well. So like, if you look at the zoning table, it's in the master plan. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have to be though. Like the, the one that was done in 91 is very specific, but we've done them where we are more general, like you're saying, where let's say it's, uh, you know, uh, Low density residential, medium density residential. This is just an example. Yeah. High density residential. But within those areas that are land use districts in the master plan, you could have several zones because you have existing lot patterns that are different within the con context of that. And that would be just as just as reasonable and actually provides more flexibility. And, and so that you don't, you're not going back to amend your master plan just because you change the density that was recommended. I was about to say, so the master plan can be that, or you're saying currently is that detailed with zoning charts from 1991. It's both, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I envision a master plan when we discussed, I was around for a lab re-exam or whatever, is, you know, the town decides, hey, we, we think that 35 foot height on the buildings and the business district is nonsense, we want skyscrapers. Well, you have to update your master plan to say, we want skyscrapers <laughs> on River Road. And then the zoning and everybody else would write the ordinances through the through the council to approve a uh, 65 foot height instead of 35 foot height, right? right? That's kind of it's it's going yeah. from the general to the specific, That's right? The okay. plan, master plan to the zone. Right. So when you work with other towns and do the examination and a master plan update, does that fundamentally change the workload? That the board takes on, or it, well, you have that? to answer the questions. It's it's more work, yes, um, but it 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 allows it gives you more in the re-exam than you might otherwise have to point to. If somebody asks for consistency, you can say, "Well, this is a re-exam and a land use plan," so you can say, "Okay, everything in here is part of the re-exam," and so you put it under that umbrella. Um, but you still have to go through the questions. Uh, that they ask, and it's, it's a little clunky the way the statute sets it up. We try to make it a little easier um, in our format, um, but it, they, they, we usually we do them together quite often. Like this, so this document, 2016, yes, master plan reexamination and master plan update it says both things are in this document. Mm -hmm. and it seems like we got we reexamined on all the questions are answered in here detail. But the master plan update did not happen. Is that am I am I I'm not sure I'm there's a lot of this document seems to have gone around every you know subcommittee in the town and we'll come back to here. And I'm, I'm a little confused as to how do we avoid not updating the master plan if we have concrete specific uh, recommendations that comes out of the, the master plan because if we are going down the path of a re-examination, how do we avoid? not updating the master plan if that's what our intended goal is. If that's what like our domain is as a planning board is to keep that current. Um, right. And 
relevant. Yeah. So uh, don't uh, we have to, don't we have to get there first? Do we have, do we have to do to re-examine decide whether the master plan fits the bill still or if it doesn't? If it doesn't, then we go to. But, but you're the, saying the re the, the, yeah, you, you're going to answer the. You're answering the questions right there. You're going to answer the questions. Just just thinking about your master plan is going to lead you to the questions that you're going to be looking at for through the re-exam. You know, what were the last at the last re-exam? What were the issues? Have they been solved? Did they, have they gotten worse or better? And, and any new issues that you want to address? But that then still does not update the master plan. Just getting, just getting to the end of that re-examination, re right? I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, no, I very twisted. No, it's a very, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, that question makes a lot more sense tonight after the explanation because the title says 2016 master plan re-examination and master yeah, plan update. Yeah, I, will, I, I will say this: when we did this, we just added the words yeah. master plan. We made it. We did a master plan hearing. We did a re-exam doesn't require a public hearing. A master plan does, and so this was handled as a public hearing. And there, and we and we called it a, an update. So it constituted an update. Uh, so technically, our master plan is as of 2016. Yeah, but it it, it wasn't a robust update. Right, was, but, right, but it, but yeah. something along the lines. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, it's not. It's in, not. It's not mired in 1991 ordinances and 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 it's it's. A, it's a working document as of 2016. Yes. But it was done without having to redo the whole master plan. It was, and you, and you never obligated to redo the whole master plan. And we could do that again this time. Yeah, and and my point about what you want to accomplish with this, what's your strategy? You really have to reflect on what are the things you want to happen, because you don't need every element. The land use plan element is like the big toe of the of the master plan, right? It's the one that drives your zone and it underpins your zoning and it gives you legal. Um, uh, a legal link to your zone. Um, circulation, uh, open space, recreation, all the other ones that go in there, utility plan elements. Unless there's something you want to accomplish, you need to do it. I mean, that's generally the way we come at these things. What are the things that you need to accomplish and what are the elements that will help give you the policy background? So it seems to me that the way to get started then would be for us to understand what elements we feel need to be addressed. So what, what does the board feel strongly about addressing? And then I would think we would then have, we then move to the survey to make sure to understand what the sentiment is in the public. And then we can come back and say, once we have that information, we can then develop the plans to address the different elements in the re-examination. Does that sound, it, it does, I, I almost I, I would almost suggest that because you folks think about this more than anybody else. I'm assuming that you guys oh, actually think about that. this. <laughs> <laughs> that you have a good sense of what some of the issues are already. We do. No, no. Right. In all seriousness, I would think we would have right. a pretty good understanding and, so, and what we've seen in subdivisions and what we've seen in the different cases that have come before. I think we have a pretty good idea of some of the things that need to be, or that we would want to look at. And then we may determine that there's no update necessary, but but we, we we would have a good idea of what needs to be looked at. I mean, there's some already some strong opinions about different elements um, already. And so I think what I'm trying to do, or what I think we need to do is we need to have, we need to be organized about what you, you know how to get started, I guess, and and then create some some deadlines um, over the next couple of meetings to address these, you, you know, to to get started, right? Yeah. And so I think the way to do that or the way forward it would would be, and please disagree if, if you can, is we should make sure we understand what elements of the master plan we want to we want to understand or i'm sorry that we want to be part of the re-examination discuss discuss those elements in terms of what what in those elements need to be need to be addressed right and then we have to develop a survey to understand what the sentiment is from the public as far as what they seem what 
they believe need to be needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then we can, uh, I would think, move forward with the actual process of updating the different elements. I, I think I, is that. I mean, does that? How does that sound in terms of what you've seen in other towns? It sounds. It sounds close. So let me let me say this. I think that before you can decide on what elements, you need to understand the issues that are out there to the greatest extent you can. You know, there's a there's a level within this room of folks who have an understanding about things, and and put those in a bucket, and then see where what elements have an influence over those issues. You know, is it a zoning change? Well, that's land use. Is it I want bike lanes? That's circulation. Do I want traffic calm? That's circulation. Do I want a new sewer plan? That's utilities, right? Do we need to go forward with the impervious cover strat you know, strategies? That's stormwater management master plan right there. So the issues will tell you what the issues will drive which elements you need, you should be working with. The issues will also be able to for you, help you articulate the questions you want in that survey. You want good questions. You don't want a lot of open-ended, mm -hmm. you know, fluffy questions. Everybody wants a beautiful town and they want beautiful retail and cafes. But everybody wants that. But to be more strategic about questions, you know, you know, for instance, you know, uh, do you think we need more multifamily housing, right? I don't know what people are going to say. I know. Depends on the town. If 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 we were going to put multifamily housing in town, would would you support uh, you know five to ten units, ten to twenty units, thirty to forty units, and then where would you want? You know, these are the kind of things you know, and that drives you know. But it's more focused on the issues that you see, and then the survey is one input tool, and it's not going to give you a magic bullet, right? You are not going to have a lot of my towns, they think it's going to be this great objective thing that they can point to. You know, people get mad that they did something. No, I, go, well, I, did, I did it because of the survey. But I'm looking at it as, a, just a, as, a, as a way to make sure, you, you know, because we're going to identify what we believe is the issue. We're going to identify what we believe the issues mm -hmm. are. And then I, I guess use the survey to see if we've missed anything or if there's any it, you, you know, to, to validate what we think is important. But it's also general sentiment. You're gonna you may find things out that you don't know, right? Well, exactly. But, and it also will allow you to understand from a priority standpoint what are the things that need you need to go deeper into, right? What are the things we need to look at more closely and drill down into? It'll give you those issues too if the if the questions are articulated correctly. Right. So both you and Rich worked on the 2016 mm -hmm. update. So you're both very much familiar with the information, with the changes that were made from 2006 to 2016. Would it would it be outside your roles? To make suggestions to us as to where you would point us in a particular direction? Well, I, the way I would start first is, is where you were talking yeah. about, look, let's go back and let's check off what's been done and what hasn't been done. And this is part of the re-exam process, right? So what hasn't been done, and then it's then it is, this wasn't done. Is it something you still think is important? Or do you think something? And then what are the additional things you think are important? And in terms of, I, I'm not a decider, but I can give good guidance on planning principles, mm -hmm. urban design, zoning, and, and and I can bring some of the experience that we've had in other places where we've done zoning ordinances, redevelopment plans, urban design plans, things like that. Yeah. Um, so, so we're really here to inform you and help you make decisions. I mean, we've talked about the business district that you want to see improvements made mm -hmm. in the business district. Uh, to keep our businesses there and encourage new businesses to move in. And that would be something the master plan could address. Absolutely. That so, is, we're, we're seeing that a lot of our a lot of our towns <clears throat> that have older commercial districts that are looking for ways to revitalize to, to get it's economics. So it's like we want things nicer, but we also want to keep the economy going. I mean, when you're in a uh, you know, insurance goes up every year. The, the cost of a municipality go up every year. Um, and, and the rates. 
And, yeah, and you need to you need to find place. Where can you grow? And where can you change? Because that's where your economics are going to come from. Your your economic. So it's something we're dealing with in lots of places. What do you think we can uh, as takeaways from this meeting for each of the planning board members? Like, I feel like I, I I've, I've kind of heard some executives always say things like, "You just start by starting." So should we all just come back to the I, next meeting with one issue that we think needs to be solved? I survey question. I that think you want to. Yeah, you know, I, I think that we would we would start we we would next meeting we would come back with with everyone having looked at the the 2016 reexamination and for lack of a better term come back with your scorecard. What do you what do you think has been addressed or not addressed or or to what degree do you think something has been addressed addressed has it been addressed well has it been mostly addressed has been not addressed at all and let's understand how we all view the progress from 2016 and then like you said dave I, I agree with you then what are the issues that we all feel are important and codify that in some kind of document coming out of next meeting that we can then in the october meeting i would think start the survey construction which is what which is what our target was to begin with anyway. Breaking to committees like taking right. We can start to the issues that we identify next meeting. We can say you know who on the board is is most qualified or or yeah you know sits in the middle of of those issues the best. I guess. I think by identifying yes, no. passionate about well, sure. yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what, what you're getting at is something what we what we normally try to do is look at trend, right? So and that's what you're talking about. You know, what what's what where were we in 2016? What's been addressed? What should still be addressed that hasn't been addressed? And what are the new issues at the same? That's really the three questions I would start with looking at that. Can you say that again, please? <laughs> you would look at what what are the yeah. things that were recommended in 2016 that were addressed and and to what satisfaction do you think they were addressed? What wasn't addressed that you think uh, should be off the list? What should stay on the list and why? And then what are the new issues that you think need to be addressed? And based on the subject matter, so like I said, that'll they'll find its way to which of the elements is the appropriate. And that, I think that's a good way to do it. Um, if you want, what I would what I would suggest is that as part of this. I don't know. Do you, do you have a good base map of the town you, with everybody that they could mark up and have any put comments on? I I mean, I could spit one out in two seconds, but I don't want to do the work that we've done. Um, if you, you probably have more tools okay. to develop that. Okay. Yeah. What I, what I would suggest is that also with a map of maybe it's the zoning map. I don't even know if the zoning map maybe it is. But something like in addition to writing things, but marking up the you know, other town. Uh, what 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 are the issues and where and where? Identifying those. Um, when we do public outreach very often, we'll have a you know in person um, engagements, and sometimes we'll have maps out there, and folks are writing on them and drawing and telling us where they went bike paths and where they went trains and all this other stuff. And that's still but but as a board, you could. Do that same exercise to topple that what you're talking about in the pre exam evaluation. So, I mean, I guess it'd be interesting to have instead of a survey, kind of as you're describing, like give the, give the town, give the public access to like a map where they can put a star. Well, social, and, yeah, and a comment. Yeah, there's engagement levels to do that. Yeah, you can do that. But it's what's different about it is. You have to be limited in the questions. Like you, you have to say, I forget what it's called, but it's a it's a pin. You, you do put a pin. pin yeah. It's a digital thing. Yeah, it's an app, and yeah. you can go online and they can use it. Um, and that's one of the engagement tools. It's not social pin. Yeah. It's um, the different. Thing. It's an interesting way. It's an interesting way to actually supplement. I think just mm -hmm. survey questions. Well, the surveys now too. Um, when you publicize them, you send them out with QR codes, and then people are like, you know, they're at a stoplight or that are business, and they do the QR code and they go right online and they do survey. 
that that's that's the thing about the survey. If you're if you're doing it, if you're not using survey, um, but you're actually program, you program it for all your devices. So. And then if you're doing, let's see, what's that? <laughs> Sounds expensive. It can be. Serving what these two. Um, Point two. Point two. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's there's ways to do it. And um, and there's other engagement, you know, public engagement methods that don't cost a lot of money. Like you could have Rich sitting, you know, setting up shop uh, by the hack. Oh, I like that. Oh, like, oh, we'll do that. Great. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll bring you yeah. the Card table. Yeah. <laughs> I can, you can borrow. And, it, and he'll have the he'll have the survey on an iPad and be like, hey, take the survey. You went outside the Dunkin' Donuts. That yeah. be real. Or next to the Girl Scouts. Yeah. 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 Or if you start the fair, right? You know, but people aren't really equipped to do surveys at the fair. But that's what that's normally what we do, right? We need some real honest answers at the fair. Well, we're look, well, we're doing a, a a big plan up in Hunter County and, and there's gonna be the, the county fairs going on. Week, right, so they're going to be the QR code is going to be out there, and they're going to be announcing that the people want to get people involved. Fireman's Fair starts Friday, but I think for a first step, review and get all your and okay. go and know you know as many ideas as you want to put into the hopper because then you guys can sit here and you can talk about what's important and then you can get it into the. All right, so what do we say? So reread 2016 re-exam. What was addressed since 2016? What can be removed from the suggestions from 2016? Um, what new issues have come up in our own mind? Um, and then I would love to challenge everybody to come up with one survey question to discuss, you know. That's good. <clears throat> Is there any but there's other documents you can review too. I mean, so there's the the impervious coverage, uh, the Rutgers. Rutgers, there's the active transportation plan, the ATP. I don't know that I've seen that. Which we did in 2017. Mm -hmm. The DOT, very helpful tool. We'll send that to you. Okay. Yeah. What about yeah, those? I, I didn't see it online. There's all the work that the land use committee has has done the um yeah. plus we sent out do we the yeah. we the ones that sent out the survey mm -hmm. so we have that survey too that was very helpful and it was very well received mm -hmm. but what was that survey for i'm sorry that was for it was it was on fair share housing it was on um oh and that had some other um other municipal type Questions involved in this yeah. in there. But it, but it was a lot of land use questions. Yeah. And then at the end, we threw in some municipal, general yeah. municipal questions. But it was it was very well mm -hmm. um, responded to. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, I think, like 60% responded. It was a, it was a yeah. very good response. It's huge. Who ran the survey? Uh, land use committee. And then they did just survey monkey. That was it. Yeah, I think I think DJ put it on the survey monkey for us. I think so. Yeah, we did it ourselves. Yeah. So we can get a copy of that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I, I think it's on the website. What? What's the date? Um, of that? What's the? How is that? Twenty eighteen. So, so a couple of things we're just mentioned. Yeah, so like use to reread is is like circa 2018 every time you keep yeah, watching I'll, it. I'll get it for you. Is it active now as well? That subcommittee. No. No, we haven't. No, it was it was we stood up for that. Yeah, Todd was yeah. on the committee. He chaired yeah. the committee. Sorry, just going back a, a page. Um, we want to reread the Rutgers report, the ATP report, the land use survey. Can we somehow have those organized and resent to the planning board? Is that is that a Sheila thing or? Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I can. <laughs> well, last month we also talked about the River Road study from 2007, the fair housing plan, the transportation plan. I think that's what you're referring to, the ATP. Those are all. Documents that were discussed last month too. Sorry, Richard, what was the Rutgers report? Is there impervious coverage? No. Yeah, it talked about how to reduce impervious, you know, it's been impervious coverage and it looked at ways to mitigate it on particular sites that had a potential for absorbing stormwater. 
we we're working with Rutgers again. I should have a proposal from them. It's a a service that they got a grant fee paid. Mm -hmm. So they reached out to municipalities. We were actually the first town to reach out to them. We had a Zoom call with them last week, two weeks ago, and we are looking to expand the whole stormwater management, best management practices, mm -hmm. green infrastructure type of stuff, which could eventually get incorporated into some ordinance updates. And that's that's all part of the planning process. So it's there's other things happening, you know, with the, the various areas and stuff. It's your stormwater management master plan up to date. Mm -hmm. Any reason for utilities to be in, in the world here? The only thing is whether or not they go towards a uh, utility for stormwater. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a you know, yeah, that's part of the stormwater. Right. So, Are you looking at it? We're not, but. Um, I think New Brunswick may have adopted that, or there's, there's some towns that are. Well, I know I know Princeton is moving that way. Yeah. Uh, Lambertville is um, trying to go that way. Um, what we're talking about is it's like your sanitary sewer system as a utility, two rivers. There's municipalities moving towards making a storm your stormwater system a utility, and. Um, we haven't talked about that, but it's it's kind of a newer topic mm -hmm. that's been right. discussed. And, right. and that's the what regulate and tax on it, charge for it. Yes, it's a mechanism right. to you know, charge right. for it and then be able to make upgrades, make upgrades, maintain yeah. it. Right. Yes, and yeah, and, and, and the, some of the structures that I know of, the way that they do it is they. They incentivize folks to do like even on the single family lot to just do various to yeah do like non structural and, yeah. and green infrastructure yeah, in order to get a credit and discount on the on the fees yeah because it's for maintaining the stormwater infrastructure. What are some of the things you do? Well, uh, like fire retention, rain garden, rain garden. Yeah. 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 cisterns, yeah. recharge, yeah, recharge, yeah. yeah. Um, what about um? Recreation open space. Yeah. That was in the 2016. Um, right? we we had, but is there is there a recreation open space coordinator yes. or a recreation? There's no open space tax. Okay. So the county does. Is uh, what about the recreation programming and maintenance and stuff like that? Stuff? It's all funded through the annual budget. Basically. But is who's in charge? Of who's in charge of you know making sure okay. that recreation works and like programming needs. and facilities and things like that? Um, the maintenance the director of parks and recreation and the recreation committee they meet monthly and they bring back their recommendations. They work off a three to five year plan. They mm -hmm. they put in for various projects upgrades. Mm -hmm. Talk to various sports groups. Is it kind of I have an understanding of like the load on fields and other facilities and the, 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 the between leagues and everything else. DJ has a good handle on that. He's our director of parks and recreation. Mm -hmm. So, so one one of the things that I, I will tell you that just as valuable as reaching out to the public is reaching out to the the staff and the folks who manage these various things and engaging them. Not a public setting, but in a you know in a, in a lesser setting mm -hmm. to find out what the issues are on their side, because you might find out that you know there's something that needs to be done for a soccer field, or or you need plenty more pickleball courts right. or something like yeah. that. Basically. And I think you may find some sort of reason why that may not have been significantly addressed is 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 informed in your reexamination report. With regard to open space and recreation, and you've got your survey back, you can see this on the report. The majority of residents seem to be satisfied, more than satisfied, or very satisfied with the borough's active and passive recreation. There were some other things with regard to that. Uh, then there was also, you know, respondents were generally partially satisfied or satisfied with availability and quality of various rec active recreation community facilities in the borough. 
such as, but not limited to, tennis facilities, boating access, soccer facilities, and those things. So it may not have gotten highlighted that much as in the last survey, so there may not have been any drive for that. There were, however, some things that were mentioned within the rules of the nation concerning the police department, which I would say if you had to check off something where we were going before, these departments checked off. Department of Public Works it was checked off. Uh, with regard, I don't know what the brush facility is. Uh, this facility should be considered for relocation based on priorities from community facility evaluation. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that was done. Community center. They formed anybody? the brush and leave committee. So okay. that did, yeah, yeah, there was some. Okay. And, and, and again, there was, was the community center, and I understand we ended up combining that with one of our facilities. So you may, again, you can have some check off things, but that still may be an active question that you put into your survey. How do you like your, you know, your current recreation facilities? There was a mention that folks in the last re examination said, they would like it if there was improved access to the Madison. I don't know if that's still active or not. And that may be easy, very easy to put into a survey question for that, those types of events. Anyone? What's that? <clears throat> and again, that's just starting with what they highlighted and take use of those surveys that you've already done and come to a conclusion as to whether or not that's still active, that may inform the survey questions that are a little more pinpointed <clears throat> uh, in general. So then I think we have at least a framework. We have a next step. Yeah, exactly. We have a next step yeah. for, for next meeting, yeah. and then we can go we can go from there. Yeah, I think uh, I mean I think we're still a little early to for you know formal plan. yeah no i think, I think we but should I, wait. I think between next meeting and the october meeting we would then have something that that might firm can look at and and we can then formally start i guess and we'll get all these docs sent to the board then i guess that's, that's yeah if anybody wants to stop and identify what specific documents you're really looking for oh, oh yeah i, I we'll, we'll text from dj to see if you could send the link or Provide us with a copy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's out there. Right. No, I'm certain they're all there. I just want to make sure that I'm hitting the ones that go to be four. Do we have a copy of the last survey questions the list or? We do have the one. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. yeah. We have that. That's actually, yeah, an example. Yeah. So we need that. We need the 2016. I mean, most of it is probably blanket. available to search because they're all like public documents. So, but if I can be helpful and put it all together in one place, I can do that. I yeah. just want to make sure I know exactly what you're that's, that it's real important that we have like a, a clearinghouse for all the documents so everybody who's involved can access them. I'm not talking about public, I'm talking about the board and uh, and anybody else in terms of any uh, folks who are managers or something. Can we just come back to an earlier topic? The, so the housing plan element is being updated by council? It's being, it's, 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 it's it's being updated, but it's under the advice of Mike Edwards with the higher and parole. They're so kind Mike of, Edwards is with higher and parole, right? No, well, Mike Edwards is with higher and parole. He's with Serenia. So who's, who's Mike? So what is he Mike Edwards about? is our Someone else now. Uh, affordable mm -hmm. housing attorney. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And okay. he works in concert with the planner, higher and parole. Higher and parole is no longer. You're a different plan. Yeah. It's a different plan. When did that change? The rule was affordable housing. The governing body appointed the professional. Yeah. 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 So the, okay, the reason I ask is. is oh, wait, wait, wait a second. They're still they're the agents, agents, right? right? Let, let them finish. Mm -hmm. The fire rule are still the agents. I thought no. they still had some. But we, we. As a planning board, we retained higher and cool as our as the housing element attorney. We did that. I mean, remember we had that whole debate about should we have two planners or one? Right. Two planners, right. one we out. Went which, two. We went with two for whatever reason. And and so we had higher. I so how did that now change? Say that with that. Yeah, we when we when we appointed all of our professionals, we, yeah, we appointed 
CCH is the, the board planner and hiring rule is the housing uh, as the housing planner for, for the housing element. Wait, did we appoint or did we just, did we understand? I thought that the town had hiring role as a blanket advisor. The, the borough the has hiring rule as their planner, but we pick CCH as our, as our planner. Cool. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't want to do that. I said we should all just go with one so that we're all reading off the same page, but a we went off. Decision. We pardon a trade level decision. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and we ended up with with three planners, I guess. So CCH higher and rule. Well, higher and rule. Higher the rule is not, as far as I know, they are no longer appointed by the borough for friendly matters. Okay. The borough has a borough planner, an affordable housing planner, an affordable housing administrative agent. And then the boards have their own professionals. That you right, and so we 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 appointed CCH as our. So who so, so, we're responsible for the housing element update in June of 2025, I would think. Right, so who's doing that? Like, I guess that's doing that. Okay. As far as I know, but I will confirm that. So that's my question: If we're responsible for the planning document and that's an element of the planning document why are we not doing the updates that? and i thought yeah and the master plan includes the master plan includes right. the housing element the borough is responsible for providing the units the like the plan the plan yeah okay are we all part of the borough we are but i think i think the root the work of Mike Edwards office, all of his communication has been directed and you get a copy of it, right, Rich? From Mike Edwards, you're copying on all he's of that. He's basically spearheading the effort, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's- So is it a narrow scope of just affordable housing updates or is it that whole section in the master plan the housing plan element. No, it only has to do with the affordable housing requirements for, sure. for the for the for the rule, the new for the, the new rule. It's gonna be a new housing yeah. plan. Yeah. New yeah. housing and plan it's only fair share plan. It's gonna replace whatever you want. And if you can, we just but my recollection of what happened before is that in coordination with what the borough, including the borough and the board, which is the our board, borough and the board were doing. The borough was lead because they were involved in the large litigation to come up with an appropriate plan that would be adopted by the court. So what our role became at that point in time was then adopting the ordinances, which also, I believe, and I can go back and check this, but which also then updated our master plan. Go we back to some of the things Mr. Sullivan was saying before. We, our plan had to be consistent with the master plan. So at least that portion dealing with affordable housing it had not been consistent. It was now consistent, which allowed us to then adopt those ordinances and we were given an opinion by those who were presenting it at that point in time. And I may have it confused as to which plan it was, but then said, with this update, your housing element and master plan concerning affordable housing will be consistent with one another and these ordinances can be adopted. So in a sense, it was a mini, if you will, mini review of your master plan, mini update of your master plan to make those things consistent, which helped then the court say, this is acceptable to us now. In the never ending scheme, so I advised us before, they're now coming out with new numbers as to what our mm -hmm. responsibility is. And we and that may oblige us to again do that. So I, I think your question is, yes, we are, but I think in certain instances, Mary Council taking the lead to make sure we're consistent with what our numbers are, which drives us then to sort of reverse engineer it, for lack of a better way to put it, make sure it's consistent with our ministry. I believe that that's how it is. I don't know if the Scotch has a different view. No. It, it just, they're, they're looking for the town, not the planning board, 
to provide them with the information on how we're going to fulfill the new housing numbers. Mm -hmm. When we first did it, we did it with overlay zones mm -hmm. and we met those needs we had. And now they've upped the numbers. So how are we going to accommodate the larger numbers? Even though we don't have, a, or we have a realistic uh, development potential of two, we're required to have 400. I mean, it's ridiculous. So this is not a, we, we were involved. I'm still we were involved. I'm not sure I'm responsible for the one question. Is that I'm just curious true? why it didn't come to this body to be discussed and addressed. Le last time I was in front of the planning board, I'm the one who was involved it, with the overlays. And so I know what, what yeah. area we overlaid and everything. With Todd and everybody else, we decided on the overlays. The planning board, not council. I was with council back then. So I kind of agree, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Wise council, well, I can't like you know that. But I can't that's that's, that's, that's a thing. question we can bring up. Yeah. Josh, do you know why? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right, because last time we sat here and went over it month after month, meeting after meeting. On ways in the church, and then we had a public hearing. The lady from the church, who was the trustee of the church, right. came in and says, Are you taking my place from eminent domain? And we said, No. All this means is if you ever decide to sell the church, nothing happens. If you ever decide to sell the church, it would then be this overlay where somebody, if they wanted to, could put a for last. Nobody was mandated to. But, but, but we have all these discussions in here. Had it, it had to have the master bedroom on the first floor. I mean, we went through all of that. But I thought we did it as a committee, not as a planning board. So, so is, is that well, I, I guess I'm is that what you think is happening? Is there a committee dealing well, with Mike Edwards right now? No, okay. Yeah. I just asked the question why, if, if we're Process. responsible for the master plan, why an element of the master plan you know, is being updated without, without I, I'm going to see the bar administrator tomorrow. I will ask him. He has asked us not on council or staff people to reach out to professionals without going through him. So I will ask him to reach out to Mike Edwards and say, why is this going, the emails going around to the council as opposed to the planning board? Yeah. That I can find out tomorrow. Okay. Well, and Sheila, you know, but it, it sounds as if this is a, supposed to be a planning board driven. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I, there had to be some coordination because we're, we're ordinance 2021 yeah, coordination, I get it. Yeah. Ordinance 2021-1 amended your affordable housing ordinance. You had ordinances 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027 through 10, and then ultimately you had an ordinance 2021-6, which created the affordable housing zone and amended the housing element and fair share of plan. I as to how that specifically occurred, I don't, I can't tell you the mechanics, but to the extent that the ordinance was then passed, they were developed by Mayor Council. As to the plan, I certainly not going to, since I wasn't in the room, yeah. I'm not going to doubt what you said that, that you came up with that, but there are obviously some coordination that then informed the ordinances. And then to make that conclusion before, because I was here for those. These are consistent with your master plan. There had to be that update in there. So otherwise, you could not have made that that, that statement. And we relied upon our professionals and that what we done, depending on which agency it was. I apologize for not going through. I remember I remember the, the, the woman coming and speaking and planning this because we did that over a Zoom. Yeah, I mean planning was planning board was deeply involved for the last time. Now, 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 whether, now, whether it came as some sort of plan from council, and then we reviewed it, we reviewed it meeting after meeting with all our recommendations. There were several meetings and, when we were in that. Yeah. yeah. But, but we were deeply involved with that, you know, yeah. overlays and all that kind of stuff. We have no vacant property, you know, yada, 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 all that, all that <laughs> things. So I will find out tomorrow. Yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Question. Like, right. I'm not asking for a from, 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 from the answer. Yeah, no, no. I will. There's I feel like if it comes back on, I think we got to send everybody better right answers that we need to have. But I, I would have thought this would be something mm -hmm. that we would be driving. 
Yeah. Or that we would have like we would have commissioned CCH to then sort of do the work in our direction, right? Like we would. I mean, I get that it has to be done. Like it has to be a coordinated effort, right? right? But I, yeah, and well, and then is there a chance though that um, we're actually just we will be involved, but just yeah, not maybe we're yeah. That's my. Right. Because <laughs> all all this has been required now is to do a report. As I said when we first started, trust fund reporting was due in June, but they moved the deadline to September. So there's a deadline in September for trust fund reporting. There's a the, the September deadline is also for unit monitoring. Yeah. How many units you've created, you know, what the status is. DFD restrictions on all this other stuff. But who's managing all? Like who's like is that when yeah. Okay. So yeah. somebody that I, I just yeah. So well that kind of makes sense though, right? So I yeah. think so if we get some sort of feedback that the units that we have pre you know pre previously determined are like now we're not we're out of compliance in some shape or form, right. then then it might kick to us to start um coming up with alternative plans and it might be different overlays or I don't know. Right. Or incentives like you mentioned. So that's it. You might you might be reading our overlays could be our overlays. You right. might be you're overlay uh, the historic district with fair share housing. And, you know, then, then it comes down to like incentives like you mentioned. You revisit your overlay. You may be right. revisiting them, but your unmet need is gonna travel from the last round to this round. Yeah. You're gonna Lots have a new allocation, which is gonna add to your there's gonna be some looking at the me mechanisms and where it is, but generally it's gonna be the same deal. Okay. I would suggest to you to the extent that you've experienced the builder's remedy will come with a settlement and plan. We were ahead of many municipalities. Because we're forced to. Yeah. yeah. We, were well, forced to. we watched Rumson yeah. take a beating, so we jumped on it right yeah. away. And I think that is ultimately our goal, right? Like we want to make sure we do not, there is no builder's remedy option out there, right? right? We are we are going to have a plan. You comply. You, you comply. want, you want yeah. to receive counsel, not a reaction. Right. right. Yeah. That's what makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, we should open up. I, I don't have anything else in, in, with regards to this. I think you have a plan before the next meeting, what to do. Betsy, thank you for following up on, on all those items um, in terms of what's going on with the, the housing element. Um, and so we'll open up for public comment. Hi, uh, this is Tracy Cole. Sheila, are you bringing me in now? You're here. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Tracy. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I, I really appreciate your conversation tonight. And I'm just here once again to support your process. I think this is really important for Fairhaven. And um, I appreciate all your work. I had a couple, just on the, you know, I think you covered it, but to Sean's point, you know, the, the fair share piece of element of the house of the master plan would probably have been initiated at the planning board as part of a, a reexamination or an update in years past. But it's, you know, for one reason or another, fair even didn't get to it, never initiated it. It's all on its own. So, I mean, if not for the, threat of a lawsuit, um, that's probably the way things would have proceeded. But um, we took an alternate path and um, we were confronted with a potential lawsuit. And so it shifted and moved into a fast track, which is you know, my understanding of why it didn't initiate independently as part of the normal process at the planning board. So, uh, but- that, I, That's the initial, that was- that's two years ago, or whenever it was, I, I'm talking about this time, right? So I, I guess the law was passed in March. Is that when it was passed? It was passed in March. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so we're only a couple of months out. I mean, so I, I guess, you, you know, Dave, as you said, it's possible that it's going to make its way to us. You know, we'll, we'll get that answer from, from Betsy um, shortly. I certainly, from my, my, from my vantage point, I, think that it should be closely coordinated with the work of the planning board. Um, and of course, we now we have a plan. It'll just evolve over time as the state continues <laughs> to meter out new obligations 
and then we evaluate our ability or, or need as we see appropriate. But I had a couple of questions about, um, I know you're gonna be reviewing documents and uh, Mr. Sullivan, I guess these questions are for you. There's a Shade Tree Commission and Environmental Commission, both of which have uh, documents as is mandated by state, the statute, the Environmental Resource Inventory at the Environmental Commission and the Community Forestry Management Plan at the Shade Tree Commission. Um, both bodies are mindful of the need to update those, but do or should they be considered in the same bucket of documents that are going to be reviewed by the board? It, 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 any document that's relevant to the subject matter that's covered in the, in the master plan elements, uh, even if they're sort of adjunct to or parallel to the master plan, may be helpful to the board members and to the public in assessing how to articulate policies in the master plan update or recommendation in a re-exam. So certainly they should be uh, <clears throat> reviewed. Okay. So um, when when we read the re-examination or the master plan, can we assume that some, I don't know, that's not the right word, but it, are we to understand that the work that's in those documents is in part driven by the community's values. So meaning while surveys are helpful, it doesn't necessarily tell us exactly um, you know, the most important thing or what everybody's thinking right now, because some of that is already in the master plan and the reexamination surveys are helpful to sort of validate that, but aren't those already embedded in the documents or community values? I don't know. I, I don't know that we. I know can't that. answer that. Yeah. So why why I ask that is because, um, and Mr. Kovats, I I may have not been tracking what you were saying properly, but I heard you kind of refer to the fact that there's a survey, the results of which may have indicated that the public is satisfied. Say, for example, with um the management of our open space. And yet we know we know at council we're struggling to. I mean, our intention is to definitely take care of it, uh, but we know we need some professional guidance in those areas, and we don't yet have a conservation, um, open space, and recreation element for our master plan, which would be a great go-to for some just overview of the capacity of the open space and what what needs to be added, what needs to be managed or stewarded differently. I guess I'm trying to say that we might not necessarily need to the public to tell us that we need to do a better job when we already know we do. I, th I, I think to give context to, to my answer, there was a question or at least a, a colloquy between our, our professionals in this instance as to where certain things were addressed, where certain things weren't addressed, and I was trying to offer a thought, not having been there for either, that as a result of the survey, there did not appear to be a driving need to address those things at that time. That, my answer now to, in response to yours is, you may be right, we may not need a survey. We may already know what's there. Mm. But in trying to inform the colloquy between our professionals as to perhaps why that was not given a great deal of additional attention in the last master plan update, re-examination update, it may have simply been because the information we had at that point in time didn't necessarily tell the planning board in 2016 that that was an issue that they needed to address then and there. Mm -hmm. but yeah, time, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and 10 years sure. has made a difference. Uh, I guess I, I had two more questions. Mr. Sullivan, is your firm usually asked to um, provide a, a process kind of outline or overview for, at some point, I really, I know the board is just beginning this work, but at some point, um, is it generally your role or the firm's role to pro provide sort of a process so that everyone understands what's happening, the community as well as the board? Yes. Yeah, and every town is different. Every board is different. Um, 
we can adopt the process to whatever works for a particular municipality or a particular planning board or governing body or whoever that is. So I'm not at the point yet where I understand fully how the structure is going to work here. Um, but once we have those conversations and we can lay it out and come to an agreement on what that process would be, then yes, we articulate that. That's great. That would be very helpful. Uh, my last question, and, and I don't know what everybody thinks about this, but would it be helpful at some point, and maybe that's not, maybe it is now, I don't know, to look at um, sort of really great master plans, um, you know, prepared by your office or others, but they're, they're, they're not necessarily going to be fair even, of course, but just, or even specific to, or related to, but, um, there are award-winning kind of master plans. I don't know that anybody's seen, I personally have, because this is stuff that interests me, but um, some of them are very visual, there are color renderings, it, you know, they're all, what Red Fairhaven is used to looking at is what you have on the table there in front of you. And I, I was just wondering if you thought it might be helpful to look at some other documents just to broaden the understanding of what a master plan could be for Fairhaven. Sure, I, th I think that's a great idea. Um, recognizing that you know different efforts have different levels of budget, and you know, but you can get a sense of what these look like. Um, we just finished Princeton Master Plan last fall. Um, they want to submit it for a word. I don't know if it'll work, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a and, and it's fairly broad. I'll say this: that Princeton hadn't done a master plan. The full master plan in, in a long time and it really and they merged the township and the and the borough merged into one municipality and it really it was like a two-year 18-month effort it was a re-exam plus uh, the master plan very very robust public outreach if you look in the back in the appendices and it talks about the public outreach it was insane um but um we really touched on eight i believe eight Plan elements plus a re-exam on that. So it was very comprehensive. It's very rare to see a town do that. Um, Asbury Park, um, we did theirs. That's a, a re-exam and a master plan uh, update. Um, and in terms of visual, uh, in Wildwood, we did a Pacific Avenue redevelopment plan, which is really a combination of zoning and, and master plan. But in that, there's much more urban design guidance than you would see in a typical master plan. But if that's important in a place like the uh, business district and thinking about how multifamily or mixed use goes, it, it, it can work with that. Um, and there's other and there's other towns that we haven't worked in that have good master plans. So. I, I would welcome the opportunity to look at them if those links are ever offered. Um, they're public documents. Yeah, go to the print. Uh, yeah. I know. I know. Asbury Park and Princeton have them online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Any other uh, public comment? Josh, anything? All right. Uh, move to move to adjourn. Second. Oh, uh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Aye. So, all right. So I'll get you that. So, two things. I'm going to find the survey. Find out what's going on. Yeah. I'm going to go talk to him. I got to talk to him anyway. Because